Good afternoon, it's Bobby again, coming to you from the farm, or should I say the yard. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about growing beets. Why? Because nothing beats a beet. These little bad boys are the best of everything. Step one, start with a high quality germination mix. This is what I use to start all of my seeds. This is PGX from ProMix. Next thing you want to do is start with some high quality seeds. This is one of my go-tos, Bolt Tardy. In a hot climate like here in Southern California, it really minimizes the odds that you are going to bolt early. I haven't had it happen yet. The next one I like to grow is Chioga. This is called the Candy Stripe Beet. Super tasty, super sweet, fantastic. You know the hardest thing about filming in Southern California in the summertime is waiting for the air conditioner to kick off. It's like Murphy's Law. Every time I'm ready, it fires up and it's like an airplane in my backyard. Anyway, what I like to do before germinating the seed is I like to put the germination medium in a box so it's nice and fluffy. I have to keep it a little bit moist. I just wrap the bag up really good, put a little water in there because in Southern California it's way too dry. I mean, it just turns into powder. So I put it in a box so it's really nice and airy and fluffy. I don't like to plant in something that's compacted. What I like to do is put it in a different box Get a bigger box so you don't waste any medium and just sprinkle it over it. So let it rain, baby. Just let it rain until you fill up all those modules. I like to pile it up into a nice little mountain. If you grew up in SoCal, you remember the commercials about Bandini Mountain. That's where they make fertilizer in Vernon, California. But I like to make my own little Bandini Mountain and then just kind of spread it out. And I like to give it a couple of whacks. That's all you need to do to, comp to compact everything, right? And once you do that, I just take my hand, I scrape off all the excess, and I'm good to go. Move that aside. I haven't wasted anything. I put this down right here, and I just go through really quick and make a little dimple where I'm going to put my seeds so they kind of lay there. I don't make a hole or anything like that. I just find it's easier if I do a little dimple, press really lightly, just blast through them super quick. And I like to put four beet seeds in each module. Some will germinate more than one and then you gotta thin them out. But it seems like four is a really good number. Sometimes you end up with three, sometimes you end up with five. So I just kinda count them out real quick. And it goes pretty fast. If my four-year-old was here, he'd want to have a race. And I would probably lose. I'm going to plant some Bolt Tardy. And then on the other side, I'm going to put some Chioga. Which is that really cool candy striped one. If you have a hard time getting your kids to eat vegetables, let them do this with you. And they'll take, take a bigger interest in it. And they'll want to see what they're growing, and they'll help you water them. Um, they can help you harvest them. And they really get into it. The more they get into it, the more they want to eat them. And it's not rocket science. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm out of that one, so I'm going to go over to the candy striper. And I'm going to fill those bad boys up, too the magic of YouTube and video production, right? So I only had a few of the Chioga in there I ran out, so I had to pop open another pack of Bull Tardy. So don't think you have to be perfect when you're doing anything. That's the worst way to have an unhappy life is to think you have to be perfect, because none of us are, baby. And don't worry if they're just right on top, because we're going to put some more of the growing medium over them. One of the biggest mistakes home gardeners make is they plant seeds too deep. The second biggest mistake is they overwater, and third, they underwater. So try not to do any of that. Beet seeds are kind of cool looking. You'll see they're like these little clusters. They look like they're from outer space, right? 
If I find any really, really small ones, I try not to plant them and I kind of go for the ones that look a little meatier. Now, when it comes to module trays, not all module trays are the same. They're not all equal. Most of them that you buy in the store and the garden center are really cheap, flimsy plastic. They break literally after about four or five uses. And the holes are really small in the bottom, so you can't really get your finger up there to pop out the, uh, the plug after it's rooted right and when you do that it tends to break it apart it upsets the roots and when you do stuff like that the plants just don't recover well so these i get from allaboutthegarden.com they were actually designed by charles dowding in england so it's called the cd60 tray they are rock solid i mean they are super super hard they're durable and they have two sizes they have the CD60, and then I bugged all about the garden forever for these larger ones they have that's a 40 cell tray. And they finally got them, they emailed me, and I ordered a gang load of them, man. Because I use those for bigger seeds, like uh, winter squash, right? They're a big seed, or fava beans, things like that. And the next thing all you really want to do is cover up the top. And then do the same thing. You just kind of want to sprinkle some on there, and kind of just gently go over the top. You're not going to pull the seeds out of the tray, so don't worry about it. Just kind of, you want to get them all over. And in Southern California, it helps if you have a little bit extra on top because it gets so dry. And you do not want these to dry out. If you dry out, the roots will die. But at the same time, you don't want them to be soggy or overwatered. There's a big difference between... Um, uh, having enough water and being saturated. You don't want to have them saturated. So that's basically it. I'll give it another little tap and then I'll basically steal my son Michael's uh, watering can because my bigger cans, they it's really easy for him to just put a ton of water on it really quickly. So I find that these smaller watering cans do a really good job. And what you want to do is uh, kind of go back and forth and maybe let it sit for a few minutes, right? And then come back to it and hit it one more time. Then what I like to do, and it works really killer, is I take this module tray and I stick it in my garage where it's dark for four to five days. And as soon as I see some of the plants pop their head through the soil, I bring it outside. Uh, if you leave it inside and they all germinate in there, they're gonna be looking for light when it's dark and they get super, super tall. You don't want them to get tall. Um, some things it doesn't matter if they get tall because you can plant them really deep. Say like a tomato plant, you can plant that super deep, but you don't want to plant these too deep. Uh, I'll show you when I plant some more. So for the uh, ease of, of your watching pleasure, I'm just gonna hit this one more time and that's it. That's all I have to do, and then I'll stick it in the garage in the dark and we're done. Here's a tray I did three weeks ago. So this was kind of a combo tray. I did beets as well as cilantro, and I've already popped out the cilantro and put it in a bed where I'm actually going to put these beets later, but I wanted to save these and show these to you. Now, I do so many beets because so many of my neighbors and friends love beets, so they're always hitting me up. So I grow a lot and just give them out to people. Uh, but if you could see these, you might think these are small, but they're really not. What I have found out, the sooner you plant plants, as long as they have some root coming through, if you can see that, they do really, really well. If you wait too long and they get kind of root bound, as they called, they don't adjust well. They're kind of like adults. As we get older, we don't bob and weave as well. We like the things we like. We're kind of stuck in our routine, whereas kids... They don't care. I mean, they might throw a little tantrum, but they get over it. Plants aren't always that way. Sometimes they don't get over it. Uh, things will bolt easy, like lettuces. Uh, cabbages won't head up really easy. They'll be more prone to aphids. So the sooner you get your plants into the ground, the better. So here's one right here. This is perfect. Just a little bit of, a little bit of root right there. Pop that thing in the ground and they'll grow killer. I talked earlier about the CD60 trays and the 40 cell trays that I get from All About the Garden that Charles Dowding des uh, designed. Here's two of them. There's the 60 cell. It's really robust and durable. It's kind of, uh, a, kind of soft, but it's hard. 
That's a wooden fence, right? Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh. No, I didn't rewind that. I just did it three times. But they're really malleable and flexible. Here's the 40 cell tray for the bigger seeds like your, your squash seeds or your uh, fava beans that are really, really big. Uh, same thing. Um, these are plastic, but the nice thing is when these wear out after using them six or 700 times or however long they last, because I guarantee you, I've probably used these a hundred times already and they look brand new. Uh, you send them back to the manufacturer where you bought them, they send them in, they melt them back down, they make more of these and then they sell them back to you. I mean, it's a win, 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 right? So spend a little bit of extra money, order a good seed tray it will benefit you in the long run. See these large holes? I can get my finger in there. I can pop the, the, the plug out easier, right? The other ones, you fight with them and you kill the little, oh, that one's perfect. Look at that. Yeah, look at those roots. That PGX works really good. Promix, PGX is killer. It's a great starting medium. You gotta do it. So thanks for joining me. And if you learned anything or you liked it, hit the like button. Subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have a comment, put it below and I'll reply. If you just want to talk or chat, I'd love to connect. A little bit later, I'm going to be putting these in the ground. So don't forget to watch. And like I always say, get your hands dirty. You got nothing to lose but a little seedling, right? That's it. And the more you do it, the easier it gets, the better you're going to get and you're gonna like it. Your confidence will build and you will never, ever taste something in the store as good as what you grow in your own yard.